Hello everyone, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the new features given to us in build 1328.13 of Command Modern Operations. So the first one, and uh, probably the majority of what we're gonna be exploring today is how they have adjusted the way that some facilities can now exist both on water as well as on land. You're sitting there going, so, so let me show you. Remember in the old days when you press the insert key and you went ahead and been like, you know, there should be a bridge here because, you know, Long Island needs to be more connected to the rest of Connecticut. So we come up here and we go to facilities and we type in bridge, ignore the ones that aren't supposed to be there. You press OK and you get this big angry message that says you can't do that. Well, guess what? You can do that now. As a matter of fact, when I press the OK button, you'll see that there's new bridges and they can actually say can place on water. So you know what? I am going to build that bridge. I'm going to press the OK button. Bing! Now you can see I have a bridge. Now this technology actually extends to other types of units as well. As a matter of fact, if you come up here, you can type in a can place, and you'll notice we have a whole collection of new items that we can now put in here. So not only are we going to put a bridge there, but you know what? Let's go ahead and stick up a wind farm. Because you know what? I like wind farms. Let's make a really big wind farm. Yeah, now it's starting to look like Long Island. Cool. Now the cool thing is these can be attacked by both by anti-ship weapons as well as conventional weapons, which gives us a nice little benefit to the technology. To demonstrate that, um, we're going to do some real damage to this bridge that is very iconic to me as a kid. And we'll also take a look at some other little features as we do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up a mission. Now, we've got a bunch of bridge segments. Before you get excited, there's no such thing as bridge segment. It's just a bridge that I stuck in the water here. And of course, I also have this little offshore surveillance platform. Now, some of you are going to say, whoa, 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 slow down, chief, slow down, chief. What if I wanted to go to surface and I wanted to type in platform? I'd say... Sure, well, whatever you like. As a matter of fact, you can come right in here and I'll grab one of your regular platforms if you'd rather than they not be the facility variety. But the facility variety has the unique benefit that it can shoot anti-ship missiles at it now. <laughs> so let's do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this control F1, 11, I should say. I'm going to go ahead and blow up C, B. <laughs> I'm going to do a strike. We'll do a land strike here. Press okie doke. And we're picking the appropriate units for this, which happen to be AGS. 37 Viggins. That looks pretty good to me. Looks pretty good to me. All right, that's looking solid. Let's go ahead and unleash my uh, hell here. So they're, of course, they're going to start taxiing down the runway. They're going to start their big, big, big engines. Um, it's going to say all sorts of angry things in Swedish when you uh, get the thing rolling. But it's a really, really neat plane for those of you who have not played around with in DCS. At least I think it's a neat plane. So anyway, I've ordered my aircraft to get ready for takeoff, and here they come. So these aircraft, of course, are equipped with um, something a little non-standard. Uh, they have the RB-15F. It's this gigantic, gigantic, gigantic anti-ship missile. And they're great. You can program waypoints on them, do all sorts of other silly stuff to it, depending on what you need to do here. So I've ordered them to go ahead and launch, and uh, they're going to go ahead and get themselves all segmented. Now, there's something brand new that you're probably are observing if you're looking very closely. And that's the fact you'll notice on their status screen now, we have a couple new bells and whistles. Uh, one of these, of course, you'll notice is the fact that it says target bridge segment. Uh, this is a new feature now. We can actually see what they're targeting at a specific time. Now, that's one of the fun new features that they added, and there's actually several others that we're going to get in a minute, but we'll get there in a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these units real quickly here, and what you're going to observe now is there's actually a new feature on the right. You will see we have TAS and ground speed. Uh, the reason this is so handy is it now tells you what the expected manual is. Um, I'm sorry, not manual. The expected throttle is at this particular time. Now, the cool joke here, is if I order my guy out to go up to 10,000 feet, you'll actually watch his ground speed drop because, of course, uh, they're climbing, and that'll have a big impact over there. It's actually cool because you have your task, ground speed, and you have your altitude down, which is actually pretty cool, and it even tells you over here exactly uh, what particular altitude has been selected for this given operation here. So that's pretty neat. But um, we're going to explore this a little bit more, and you'll see why in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up time. Our units are going to start sailing their way towards that release point. Uh, they're getting close. Uh, they're just about in range. It's looking pretty groovy. And they're going to go ahead and uh, pull the trigger there once they get a little bit closer here. And come on, guys. Don't let me down. Notice, by the way, they're not firing. And uh, the reason they're not firing, watch this. Uh, this is one of those fun little things everybody forgets. Uh, let's see. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Oh, we're in range. I'm sorry. I'm just being rude to myself kind of a thing like that. So our guys are going to continue flying towards it. They're going to fly at basically point blank range here. And of course, uh, these missiles go off on their own. And if I click on them, you'll notice something brand new. They now have, difficult to see on your screens probably, an ETA timer built right into our target, which you can actually see if you look very closely. There's now a crosshair that tells you what the selected target is. So if I click on this one, for example, you'll notice the crosshair is now on this guy, and in 24 seconds, that particular target is going to be struck. Now go ahead and I'll zoom out just a tiny bit here. They fixed a lot of things, by the way, with time acceleration, which has been great. And oh my gosh, oh the humanity. Oh, this is bad. This is a lot. Oh, no. Oh, no. That poor bridge. Oh, but 
we didn't destroy the whole bridge, so uh, we have to finish the job here. And um, we're going to do that. Zoom, 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 zoom. Let's go borrow one of these. Yeah, Dongfang 21. Uh, we'll definitely do the job here. So I'm going to press Shift F1. I'm going to go ahead and uh, drag a box, let go. And then, of course, I've got four of these. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to press this. And each one of you gets a missile. And you specifically, you get uh, two missiles there. Oops. Turns out I did not push that correctly when I did it. My apologies, everyone. That's a little better. Cool. So now this is when things are going to get interesting. Um, people like ballistic missiles. Uh, they're very, very effective weapons to just sort of drop in. <laughs> but the problem with the ballistic missile, of course, is trying to predict when they're going to get to their target. Now you're sitting here going, oh, you're just going to click on it, and you're going to see exactly how long it's going to take to get to the target. Nope, not correct. As a matter of fact, when I click on this, you will observe that um, we do have our little pointer here, which is telling us where the weapon is being guided towards. But you see nothing on here that's actually indicating exactly how long it's going to take to get to its target. So what I'm gonna do is speed up time a little bit here. Let's go ahead and give it a nice little push. It's uh, 800, and, uh, what is that? Woo, 900 kilometers up. There's the Apogee right there. And it's gonna start going, whoa, and flying back into the atmosphere here. Now, for those of you who know BMs, of course, uh, you would know, of course, this particular ballistic missile will split and actually come into us, just kind of the warhead component and let the rest of it sort of drop off the back. Now, the Warhood component, which is interesting enough, will have an ETA because, of course, it's in the terminal phase. So I'm going to let this thing uh, continue dropping there, getting a little bit closer, starting to get into the upper atmosphere. It's going to start slowing down pretty soon because uh, you're going to start hitting the thick stuff, as I like to call it. Let's go ahead and grab one of these right here. It's uh, really cool, though. Notice my TAS is like 6,000 knots, but my ground speed is 2,500, just to give you an idea of just how steep of an entry this particular target is doing. It's pretty cool that we get that as a feature now. now I'm going to be timing this carefully because it doesn't drop off the bus until like the last second. There it is, right there. Now, if I click on one of these targets, you're going to observe that I now have 32 seconds to impact, which is so cool because um, now we can basically predict these things, which I find very, very wild. So I'm just going to let this thing kind of drop in from orbit here. Um, what are you guys doing? Are you, oh, ho, you still have some RB-15s left. It's okay. My dolphin is going to take care of the rest of that for you guys. But you can um, join in if you'd like. You're going to have to wait until these things strike before they're going to launch their missiles, though. So look at this. Look at this. I promise two of those will malfunction. Here we go. Oh, just one of them malfunctioned. Not bad. So now this crew, of course, is uh, going to deal with the last target there. Now, there's another really neat feature that they added, which I think is really, really cool. And that's the fact that you can have aircraft that basically emergency uh, go to a diversion base rather than go to their original kind of their OG uh, takeoff point. So what I'm going to do real quickly here is I'm going to grab myself another airplane. I'm pretty confident they're going to blow that sucker up. I'm going to grab myself an aircraft and I'm going to call it, uh, I'll do Cessna 172. Because, oh my gosh, why do we have so many versions of this now? He <laughs> the P model, I know that version. So we're gonna grab this one and um, we're gonna go ahead and take him real quickly and I'm gonna order, wow! I've never been that high in a Cessna 172. I think I hit 8,000 once. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and order him to have a base, um, not return to base, my bad. On a sign, on a sign, on a sign! You can just hit the U key to cancel that, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to order him to have a new base. Let's go ahead and grab this guy. Let's see here. Let's see here. Attack options, assigned to mission. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm being blind. Hang on a second. Yeah, right in front of me. It's like new home base. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on my original base here. So he's going to start uh, kind of cruising, kind of cruising. He's going to go home. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a piece of debris from one of those missiles suddenly strikes him. And he finds himself low on fuel. Uh, let's see here. Fuel would be low for this guy. <laughs> Let's go up to unit properties, set unit properties. Uh, let's see here. Um, he's got 169. He finds himself with eight units of fuel. That's not even enough. Let's do seven units of fuel. Oh, oh, oh that's not good. That's a gallon. Pause. So what he's going to do is he's going to immediately panic. And um, you're going to see he says return to base bingo because he does not have enough fuel to do this. Check a look at this. He's selected a new base to land emergency air base. Isn't that convenient that somebody put that air base right there? So what he's going to do now is he's going to select this as his new home base, and he's going to have the world's steepest approach to landing from any one Cessna 171, yeah, 172 ever. Four point three. Oh my gosh, he's got like 24 minutes for one gallon of fuel, and nah, that's <laughs> that's wishful thinking in a 172. But I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, here we go. He's got four kilograms left. Actually, I take it back. Four kilograms isn't bad, especially in a descent. My bad. It wasn't wasn't in pounds. It was in kilograms. And thunk, you can see now all he's all set. Now, what you're probably saying is, hey, that was pretty handy. Oh, he's got to finish landing. <laughs> I guess I should give him a minute to taxi up to the line. Of course, the little line you guys tell him to cut his... Oh, he's still taxing. I'm sorry. I'm being impatient. I'm being impatient. Come on, my guy. These are big air bases. Finish up. All right, I'm gonna give you two minutes this time. Okay, that's plenty of time. So let's grab him now and um, let's go ahead and set time to ready. And um, let's go ahead and say he's got, basically he's ready. I'll give him a second to go. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab him and I'm gonna order him to go ahead and take off. So I'm gonna launch him individually. Now here's where things get a little interesting. 
So he's going to take off and he's going to start doing some apparently touch and go landings, which is what I would do. So one of the things you'll notice here is if I order him to come fly over here, if I come over here, notice his assigned base is emergency air base. It is no longer the original air base that we assigned him to. So after that's been done, we have to actually come in here. We have to come back to the button I couldn't find the first time. Go ahead and click on him. And now if I press the B key, you'll notice he's actually gonna fly back to where he needs to go and plop himself down for landing. So this is a really cool feature. And there's actually a lot of other little bells and whistles and features that they added to this version of command. But those are kind of the ones that jumped out at me as, hey, this this is neat and I had to play with it. Enjoy.